Okay, so today I'm going to do a reading from the Ankutare Nikaya, the Book of Eights. Um, I think this is normally referred to as the Anuruddha Sutta. Um, it just says here Anuruddha. And um, what do we know about Anuruddha? Anuruddha was like um, in Buddhism. Anuruddha is like he's the guy to to like you want to be like and uh, emulate because he's um, yeah. You're going to see from this text I'm going to re be reading that um. He's got some really interesting and skillful qualities, and um, yeah, I always remember that my teacher said that if you want to be like anyone, then you should be like this guy, Anuruddha, and uh, that's always so wonderful to think back on, and um, yeah, and let's just go through this um, sutta here, and um, maybe we could learn about why it is that we should be like uh, the Venerable Anuruddha um, and take him as our I mean usually we, w we would say that, that um, we should aspire to like higher planes like um, what we would think about as like um, taking an angel or a god or even a Buddha and uh, hold the, that, that as a like kind of like the ideal or of course I mean enlightenment to me is the goal so whatever goal you have with your meditation um, I think it's it's very common and it's a good thing to to like um, kind of emulate the angels or the gods or even uh, a Buddha a private Buddha or our historical Buddha and uh, learn and study and practice. But today we are going to be uh, taking Anuruddha as our example today and um, yeah, should be interesting. So with that little introduction there on um, Anuruddha and the reason for me reading this, uh, let's just go right ahead. So we have to hear the Ankutra Nikaya um, through through the Book of Eights and um, yep here we go Anuruddha let me just check the stream to see everything is okay and uh, we can just we could just go ahead and get this going yep so we're here at that Buddha Center in the Deer Park, and um, I don't know how I should capture this. Maybe we should give it a little. I mean, I don't want to go behind the Buddha there, so let's just make a nice picture. Okay, <laughs> what did I do here? Okay, okay, something like maybe something like this. This seems nice. We've got some flowers and some lighting and some a rock and some <laughs> and a Buddha. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to go over to the text now and start reading. Anuruddha. On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling among the Bhagas in Sung Sumaragira in the deer park at Bisakala Grove. Now, on that occasion, the venerable Anuruddha dwelt among the Setis in the eastern bamboo grove, in the eastern bamboo park. While the venerable Anuruddha was alone in seclusion, a course of thought arose in his mind thus. This Dhamma is for one with few desires not for one for one with strong desires and that was the first um, 
thought. Uh, we're going to go through seven thoughts here. And number two, this Dhamma is for one who is content, not for one who is discontent. And three, this Dhamma is for one who resorts to solitude, not for one who delights in company. And four, this Dhamma is for one who is energetic, not for one who is lazy. And five, this Dhamma is for one with mindfulness established, not for one who is model-minded. Number six, this Dhamma is for one who is concentrated and not for one who is unconcentrated. And number seven, this Dhamma is for one who is wise, not for one who is unwise. The Blessed One knew this with his own mind, the course of thought in the Venerable Anuruddha's mind. Then, just as a strong man might extend his drawn-in arm or draw his extended arm, the Blessed One disappeared from among the Bhagas at Sung Sumaragira in the deer park at Bisakala Grove and reappeared before Venerable Anuruddha among the cities in the eastern bamboo park. The Blessed One sat down on the seat prepared for him. The Venerable Anuruddha then paid homage to him and sat down to one side and the Blessed One said to him, Good, good, Anuruddha. It is good that you have reflected on these thoughts of a great person. Namely, this Dhamma is for one with few desires, not for, wo for one with strong desires. And all the way through to the, se the seventh thought, and the Buddha continued, This Dhamma is for one who is wise, not for one who is unwise. Therefore, Anuruddha, also reflect on the eighth thought of a great person. So the Buddha adds in here the, the eighth thought and gives it to Anuruddha. And the eighth thought is, This Dhamma is for one who delights in non-proliferation. Who takes delight in non-proliferation? Not for one who delights in proliferation who takes delight in proliferation. When, Anuruddha, you reflect on these eight thoughts of a great person, then, as much as you wish, secluded from sensual, pleasure, sensual pleasures, secluded from unwholesome states, you will enter and dwell in the first jhana, which consists of rapture and pleasure being born of seclusion. Accompanied by thought and examination. The Buddha continues. When you reflect on these eight thoughts of a great person, then, as much as you wish, with the subsiding of thought and examination, you will enter and dwell in the second jhana which has internal placidity and unification of mind and consists of rapture and pleasure born of concentration, without thought and examination. The Buddha continues, when you, when you reflect on these eight thoughts of a great person, then, as much as you wish, with the fading away as well of rapture, you will dwell Equanimous. Oh, I thought I just missed one there. I didn't, so let's continue. You will dwell equanimous and mindful and clearly comprehending, experience pleasure with the body. You will enter and dwell in the third jhana, of which the noble ones declare he is equanimous, mindful, one who dwells happily. When you reflect on these eight thoughts of a great person, then, as much as you wish, with the abandoning of pleasure and pain, 
and with the previous passing away of joy and sadness, you will enter and dwell in the fourth jhana, neither painful nor pleasant, which has purification of mindfulness by equanimity. The Buddha continues, When, Anuruddha, you reflect upon these eight thoughts of a great person and gain at will, without trouble or difficulty, these four jhanas that constitute the higher mind and are pleasant dwellings in this very life, then, while you dwell contentedly, your rag robe will seem to you as a chest full of variously colored garments seems full of variously colored garments seem to a householder or a householder's son, and it will serve you serve for your delight, relief and ease and for entering upon Nibbana. The Buddha continues, When you reflect upon these eight thoughts of a great person and gain at will these four jhanas, then you will dwell contentedly. Your scraps for alms food will seem to you as a dish of rice cleaned of black grains and served with many grave gravies and curries and curries seems to a householder or a householder's son, and they will serve for your delight, relief and ease, and for entering upon Nibbana. When you reflect on these eight thoughts of a great person and gain at will these four jhanas, then you will dwell contentedly. Your dwelling place at the foot of a tree will seem to you as a house with a peaked roof, plastered inside and out, draft-free, with bolts fastened and shutters closed. In the same way it seems to a householder or a householder's son, and it will serve for your delight, relief and ease, and for entering upon Nibbana. When you reflect on those eight thoughts of a great person and gain at will these four jhanas, then, while you dwell contentedly, your bed and seat made of straw will seem to you as a couch spread with rugs, blankets and covers, with an excellent covering of, an, of antelope hide, with a canopy above and red bolsters at both ends, seems to a householder or a householder's son, and it will serve for your delight, relief and ease, and for entering upon Nibbana. When you reflect upon these eight thoughts of a great person and gain at will these four jhanas, then you will dwell contentedly, your medicine of fermented cow's urine will seem to you as various medicaments of ghee, butter, oil, honey, and molasses seem to a householder or house householder's son, and it will serve for your delight, relief, and ease, and for entering upon Nibbana. Therefore, Anuruddha, you should also spend the, n the next rain's residence right here among the cities, in the eastern bamboo park. Yes, Bante, the venerable Anuruddha replied. Then, having exhorted the venerable Anuruddha, just as a strong man might extend his drawn in arm or draw, draw his extended arm, the Blessed One disappeared before the Venerable Anuruddha among the Satis in the Eastern Bamboo Park and reappeared among, among the Bhagas at Sumsumarakira in the Deer Park at Besa... I'm sorry, at the 
in the deer park at Bisagala Grove. He then sat down on the seat prepared for him and addressed the bhikkhus. I will teach you, bhikkhus, the eight thoughts of a great person. Listen and attend closely. I will speak. Let me just get a little drink here. And the Buddha said, um, listen and attend closely. I will speak. Yes, Bhante, the bhikkhus replied. The Blessed One said this. And what, bhikkhus, are the eight thoughts of a great person? 1. This Dhamma is for one with few desires, not for one with strong desires. 2. This Dhamma is for one who is content, not for one who is discontent. And 3. This Dhamma is for one who resorts to solitude, not for one who delights in company. And 4. This Dhamma is for one who is energetic, not for one who is lazy. Um, uh, and number 6. This Dhamma is for one who is concentrated, not for one who is unconcentrated. Number 7. This Dhamma is for one who is wise, not for one who is unwise. And number eight, this Dhamma is for one who delights in non-proliferation, who takes delight in non-proliferation. Not for one who delights in proliferation, who takes, who takes delight in proliferation. And then it continues to go through the eight thoughts um, in more detail. Uh, st and starting with the first one, um, we'll continue uh, thus. When it was said, this Dhamma is for one with few desires, not for one with strong desires. With, ref re with reference to what was it said, was this said. Here, when a bhikkhu is one with few desires, he does not desire. Let people know me to be one with few desires. When he is content, he, is, he does not desire. Let people know me to be one who is content. When he resorts to solitude, he does not desire. Let people know me to be one who resorts to solitude. When he is energetic, he does not desire. Let people know me to be energetic. When he is mindful, he does not desire. Let people know me to be mindful. When he is concentrated, he does not desire. Let people know me to be concentrated. When he is wise, he does not desire. Let people know me to be wise. When he delights in non-proliferation, he does not desire. Let people know me to be one who delights in non-proliferation. When it was said, This Dhamma is for one with few desires, not for one with strong desires. It is said with reference to this that this was said. Let me read again the last sentence there. When it was said, this Dhamma is for one with few desires, not for one with strong desires, it is with reference to this that this was said. Continuing on with thought number two. When it was said, this Dhamma is for one who is content, not for one who is discontent. With reference to what 
was this set. Here, a bhikkhu is content with any kind of robes, alms food, lodgings, and medicines and provisions for the sick. When it was said, this dharma is for one who is content, not for one who is discontent. It is with reference to this that this was said. Continuing with thought number three. When it was said, this dharma is for one who resorts to solitude, not for one who delights in company. With reference to what was this said? Here, when a bhikkhu resorts to solitude, bhikkhus, to solid, when a bhikkhu resorts to solitude, bhikkhus, bhikkhunis, male lay followers, female lay followers, kings, royal ministers, heads of other sects, and disciples belonging to other sects approach him. In each case, with a mind that slants, slopes, and inclines to seclusion, withdrawn, delighting in renunciation, he gives them a talk invariably concerned with the dismissing them. When it was said, this Dhamma is for one who resorts to solitude, not for one who delights in company. It is with reference to this that this was said. Continuing with the fourth thought. When it was said, this Dhamma is for one who is energetic, not for one who is lazy. With reference to what was this said? Here, a bhikkhu has aroused energy for abandoning unwholesome qualities and acquiring wholesome qualities. He is strong, firm in exertion, not casting off the duties of cultivating wholesome qualities. When it was said, this Dhamma is for one who is energetic, not for one who is lazy. It is with reference to this that this was said. Continuing with thought number five. When it was said, this Dharma is for one with mindfulness established, not for one who is model minded. With reference to what was this said? Here, Abhiku is mindful possessing supreme mindfulness and alertness. One who remembers and recollects what was done and said long ago. When it was said, this Dhamma is for one with mindfulness established not for one who is model-minded. It is with reference to this that this was said. Continuing with the sixth thought. When it was said, this Dhamma is for one who is concentrated, not for one who is unconcentrated, with reference to what was this said. Here, secluded from sensual pleasures, a bhikkhu enters and dwells in the fourth jhana. When it was said, this dhamma is for one who is concentrated, not for one who is unconcentrated. It is with reference to this that this was said. The seventh thought. When it was said, this dharma. I'm sorry. When it was said, this dhamma is for one who is wise not for one who is unwise, with reference to what was this said. Here, a bhikkhu is wise. He possesses the wisdom that discerns arising and passing away, which is noble and penetrative and leads to the complete destruction of suffering. 
When it was said, this Dhamma is for one who is wise, not for one who is unwise. It is with reference to this that this was said. When, oh I'm sorry, continuing with the eighth thought that the Buddha added um, to Anuruddha's seven thoughts of a great being. The last thought, here we go. When it was said, this Dharma, I'm sorry, when it was said, this Dhamma is for one who delights in non-proliferation, who takes delight in non-proliferation, not for one who delights in pro proliferation, or who takes delight in proliferation. With reference to what was this said? Here, a bhikkhu's mind launches out upon the cessation of proliferation, becomes placid, settles down, and is liberated in it. When it was said, this dharma I'm sorry guys, I don't know why I'm switching over there. When it was said, this Dhamma is for one who delights in non-proliferation, who takes delight in non-proliferation, not for one who delights in proliferation or who takes delight in proliferation. It is with reference to this that this was said. Wow, that was a real good one. Let's let's just hear the answer again for the eighth one. Here, a bhikkhu's mind launches out upon the cessation of proliferation. So the mind l launches upon the cessation of proliferation. So that probably means something like the mind has noticed and taken note of the cessation of um, proliferation as proliferation arises and then it is and then it ceases so the mind has taken cessation as its object here and becomes placid yep and then settles down or the mind settles and is liberated in it very interesting of course it is this is the teachings of the Buddha okay continuing on um, we're almost at the end here and that was the eighth thought and uh, this is the last bit so um, let's go ahead then the venerable Anuruddha spent the next six I'm sorry then the venerable Anuruddha spent the next rain's residence right there among the cities in the eastern bamboo park dwelling alone withdrawn heedful, ardent, and resolute. In no long time the venerable Anuruddha realized for himself with direct knowledge in this very life that unsurpassed consummation of the spiritual life for the sake of which clansmen rightly go forth from the household life into homelessness and having entered upon it he dwelled in it. He directly knew. Destroyed is birth. The spiritual life has been lived. What had to be done has been done. There is no more coming back to any state of being. And the venerable Anuruddha became one of the Arahants. On that occasion, when he had attained Arahantship, the Venerable Anuruddha spoke these verses. Heaven, having understood my thoughts, the unsurpassed teacher in the world came to me by psychic potency in a mind-made body. He taught me more than my thoughts contained. The Buddha, delighting in non-proliferation, instructed me in non-proliferation. Having learned this Dhamma, I delighted in his teaching. I have gained the three 
true knowledges. The Buddha's teaching has been done. And that concludes the Anuruddha Sutta. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. And if you want to read this yourself and any time, you should look for the advice to Anuruddha in the Anguttara Nikaya, the Book of Eights. And um, let me get over here to Second Life again. So, thank you so much for listening. And um, if I could just get my avatar to look straight, maybe we could sit right here under that tree, just next to the Buddha, as we sign out here. So, thank you so much for listening, and I hope that um, this teaching may be of true, true benefit for you and for everyone around you. And, um, yeah, keep practicing and keep reflecting and all the best. And um, check out some of my other videos and uh, maybe give a like or, or favorite them or share them or if you think they were interesting or if you learned something from them and you feel like um, you want to take part you could um, you could share it or like it or comment I'll try to uh, to answer if, um, the comments there so um, so yeah keep practicing and keep studying and keep reflecting and all the best and thank you so much for listening thank you <laughs>